Hello everyone, welcome back to Daikin Cards. So the Asian Pacific Math Olympiad has finally released its 2024 problems. And today we'll be taking a look at problem number 3 which is an inequality problem. So in recent years, inequality problems have shifted away from being just simple application of standard results to requiring a lot more ingenuity. So without further ado, let us see what this problem has in store for us today. So here is problem number 3. Let n be a positive integer and a1, a2, dot dot an be positive real numbers. Prove the following inequality. So this inequality looks a bit complicated. So let me help you digest the inequality by writing out an explicit example where n equals to 3 to just get a feel of how this inequality looks like. So when n equals to 3, I'm also going to use a, b, c instead of uh, a1, a2, a3 just to simplify the look and feel of it again. So the left hand side, the summation basically have a half term, a quarter term and an eighth term. And the brackets are basically 2 over 1 plus something. So you have 2 over 1 plus a, 2 over 1 plus b, 2 over 1 plus c. And the powers are also uh, in increasing powers of 2. Okay, so half and then 2, 1 quarter, 4, 1, 8, 8. As for the right hand side, you also have 2 over 1 plus something, but the something is the product of the terms. And then you have minus 1 over 2 to the n. Okay, so right off the bat, this looks a bit unconventional. Uh, especially the minus sign here. It looks uh, quite strange to have a minus sign in inequality problems. So you might want to just shift this to the left hand side. And indeed, there are good reasons to do so because now the sum of the coefficients is uh, summing up to 1. You can see this as 1 over 8 times 1 and 1 8 being the coefficient. So since you have coefficients that sum up to 1, you might be tempted to try weighted AMGM. So unfortunately, uh, based on at least the, the things that I tried, if you just directly apply weighted AMGM with the coefficients half, quarter, uh, 8 and 8, I can't really quite finish the problem. So maybe you could, but let's find another approach to this problem. So the other possible thing you can do with coefficients being so nicely uh, rolled out like this is you might want to collapse terms two at a time. And what do I mean by this? So you have 1 8 plus 1 8, it actually sums to 1 quarter. And so maybe you could have um, a little lemma where you combine two terms with same coefficient to get uh, a new term, but the coefficient is now doubled before. And when you do that, you actually have now a quarter and a quarter, which again are two terms with the same coefficient. And you can apply the same lemma presumably to get now a term where the coefficient is half and then now you have two terms of coefficient half and you combine to get a term of coefficient one which you hope is the right hand side. So if you want to pursue this idea, it's actually not very difficult to figure out what should go into the brackets over here. So if you want to take a little guess on what the term should be, feel free to pause the video. But I'll go on to the solution. So drum roll, the lemma that you need to prove is the following. So over here, indeed I have two terms of co the same coefficient, 1 over 2 to k, and I want to make a new term that is now double the coefficient. So 1 over 2 to k minus 1. And at the same time, the powers are going to be half so that I can repeatedly combine with the next term. So as for what goes in the bracket, the clever thing to do is actually multiply the x and y here to give x, y. Because eventually you do want to have all the terms multiplied together. So you can imagine if you keep recursively apply this idea, the terms are eventually all going to be multiplied together. So to make this even more concrete, let us see how this claim will help us uh, prove the case where n equals to 3. So assuming the claim is true, which we will prove in a moment, how do we finish the problem? So for the case n equals 3, for example, uh, previously we have 1, 8 times 1, but 1 can be written as 
2 over 1 plus 1 to the power of 8, right? So now we match the form in the claim. We can combine the 1, 8 and the 1, 8 to get a 1 quarter term. And the power here is half of before. And C times 1 is C. Now, this is, uh, the power of the claim is even clearer after you look at the next step where you combine the 1 quarter term and 1 quarter term to get the half term. But you also multiply B and C to get B, C, and you see the product here is starting to take shape. And indeed, if you combine the half term and half term by applying the lemma one more time, you now have a one term, and A times B, C is A, B, C, so you do get the full right-hand side appearing. So you can obviously extrapolate this logic to general N, which I will leave you to do so. But now all that remains is to prove this claim. Now, you might think that this claim looks a bit uh, straightforward to prove because now there's no longer this ugly summation sign and it's just you no know, sum of two terms bigger than or equal to a term on the right. How hard can it get, right? Well, it's actually still not so trivial. So thankfully, there's still some interesting work to do. And the natural idea is, okay, let's prove this by induction. Let's start with the base case k equals 1. And you might think, yeah, the base case should be normally quite easy to show in, in an induction proof, right? So let's write out what you need to show. We need to show the following. Half of this plus half of this is greater than or equal to this. It's just plugging in the definition. And you can, you know, simplify this by uh, dividing 4 uh, on di moving. If you move the half over, this will be 4. And then you divide the 4 across uh, the numerators, you'll get this expression. So this looks like uh innocuous looking expression it looks like something that should be proven by standard results and actually this is one of the troll moments of this problem as well because i really thought the base case would be really easy to prove and this result looks like it should be quite easy to prove but wow this step really took me a while so there are two ways you can prove this one is you can obviously cross multiply and expand everything and then try and you know uh do some algebra to prove it and it's actually quite ugly. You do get like third power or fourth power terms. So, uh, unfortunately, that's uh, an ugly way to do it. But there's actually another uh, much more elegant approach, but uh, quite a bit harder to spot. So, to prove this inequality, one thing you can do is first observe the following inequality. So, 1 plus x squared is less than or equal to 1 plus xy, 1 plus x over y. So apparently there's a name for this inequality. I think some call it uh, Cauchy's inequality or something, but you can directly prove this by just expanding the terms. So you have 1 plus 2x plus x squared, and then the right side is just 1 plus xy plus x over y plus x squared. And uh, 2 here is less than or equal to y plus 1 over y. So hopefully that is uh, clear to you. You can also prove this by uh, AMGM. But basically, then the rest of the terms are matched up. So this inequality is clearly true, which means this inequality is true. So similarly, you can write the same inequality with uh, x replaced by y and y replaced by x. So this inequality is true as well. And you want to put this on the left side, right? So what you do is you invert and sum them together. So you have this is greater than or equal to the 1 plus xy uh, is common. So now it's 1 over 1 plus xy because you invert. And then the terms here become uh, this expression. And this expression here you can very easily check is equal to 1 because let's just cross multiply you get 1 plus y over x plus 1 plus x over y and the denominator is the same. So this is just 1. So phew, we managed to prove the base case. Yeah, so I know it's actually not as easy <laughs> as uh, the usual base case in induction. But thankfully, the induction step actually turns out to be relatively straightforward. So you want to show uh, that, let's say you assume that it's true for k already, you want to show for the k plus 1 uh, expression. So you want to show that this thing is bigger than or equal to this thing. So the natural thing to do when you see something like this it's actually quite uh, natural is to apply the power mean inequality. So to recap, the power mean inequality for the case of uh, the square versus the AM is uh, as follows. 
So you apply, when you apply a power min, you will lose a power of two, which is what you want. So you do get this, and then uh, this is the square from moving the power half over. So once you have this expression, this is basically in the form of the induction hypothesis. So if you look at the terms inside the uh, big bracket, it's uh, the same as the induction hypothesis. So if you apply it, you will get this expression. And then if you put back the square, you get your desired result. So induction step, not too bad. But overall, this problem, well, it requires you to first come up with the very uh, hard to motivate uh, uh, claim unless you actually thought of the idea of combining uh, powers of two together. And then the induction step is also uh, quite straightforward, but the base case is actually quite difficult. So what do you think of this inequality problem? It's certainly uh, quite unconventional. So let me know your comments in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.